Welcome to The Fix List, a guide to improving your paintings by looking at other work in search of common visual problems. Today's problem is linear perspective. And despite what you may think, this is not just how to draw train tracks or buildings. This is just a set of measurements that help anything you draw look more realistic. So let's look at a few examples from the control paint community. This first one here is a, well, frankly, it's a classic example, and it is a building. And if there's one area where beginners prove that they don't understand perspective, it's with having an incorrect horizon line. Because you might look at this and think, eh, seems fine. But I would argue that the height of the horizon line does not match with the way the building is laying in space. The way I know that is because I can do a perspective overlay. I can follow these lines that are, in fact, diminishing in parallel, in perspective. And when you follow two lines like that, where they cross is the vanishing point. The vanishing point is on the horizon line. Well, here we have a problem. The math tells me the building's perspective space leads me to a horizon that is about two inches higher than the artist's depiction of the horizon. So we have two choices here. We could either change the building or we could change the horizon. In this case, changing the building would be a lot more work. Changing the horizon is relatively straightforward. So let's try that first. And the paint over I did was just to change the level of the horizon a little bit. Now you'll notice I did cheat and add a little extra height on the building. Let me show you why I did that. Previously, the top of the building is laying almost exactly on where this horizon line is plotted to be. When you have something so perfectly matched up like that, it can make for a confusing space visually. It's almost like you've created an optical illusion. This is called a visual tangent. Anyway, visual tangents are bad. So in this case, I'm fixing two problems at one time. I just want to make that clear. Here's the paint over. You can see I've just raised up the horizon line. And then I've also just added a little height on the building. So what we have here is a building that is largely unchanged. I changed the window a little bit because there are a few issues previously. Here you can look at the window before one of the lines wasn't quite right. But anyway, it's largely unchanged, but now the horizon matches the sense of space that the building occupies. I can't tell you how many times I look at beginner images that have a relatively correct object and a fine looking background, but they just don't match up with the same horizon line. Now, if I wanted to go the other direction and to change the building and leave the horizon line intact, I could do that too. So here's how that would look. You can see this took more changes to the building, but if I were to show the perspective lines here, we can see these converging parallel lines go all this way over here and then end at the vanishing point. And the vanishing point is at the same level as the horizon line. So I know that the building is in correct perspective relative to the horizon. Now, obviously, it took a lot more work to go from the original here to this version. And the easier fix would be just to do a change to the horizon line. Before, after. Here we've got a pretty similar issue. Character not quite lining up with the background and linear perspective is to blame. Now, in this case, the problem are the ellipses. And you'll see my paint over is actually really very minor, but it all comes down to this idea of ellipses. If we were looking at the top of a circle or the bottom of like a flying saucer, if it's high above the horizon line, we see more of it. It becomes closer and closer to an actual circle. As it gets closer to the horizon line, it gets narrower and narrower. This is called the degree of the ellipse. Well, this applies to any ellipse in your image, not just random floating circles in the background. So I gave myself some guides here just to say that if I'm looking up at an ellipse, it's going to have a wider arc or it'll get flatter and flatter as it gets close to the horizon. And then I use that to guide my paint over. So let's just look at the foot first. In the original, it's almost flat across. The ellipse has too narrow of a degree. It's further away from the horizon line, which tells me it should I should see it more from a top down angle. And I'm looking more sort of straight on in this view. So in my paint over, I just widened out the degree so I can see more of the top of the foot. I did the same for these ellipse details on his uh, shin pad here. 
These are almost straight across. And then I've just given them a little bit more roundness based on my ellipse guide here. Then moving up, we get to the horizon line, and then we go above the horizon line. The same is true. Here, if we look at the details on his chest, it all feels very flat, like I'm looking at it from straight on. Well, in fact, I'm looking slightly up at it, and I know that because it's above the horizon line. So for that, I just followed my ellipse guide, and I made those generally upward-facing arcs. So I can see the bottom of things that are above the horizon line, I can see the top of things that are below the horizon line. It's not a big deal, but these changes make your image feel much more related to your background. The whole image feels more believable. Before, after. It's pretty subtle. So now that we understand how ellipses work, we should look at this background and understand there's something fundamentally wrong, which is that almost every tree here is seen in total profile, in side view. All the lines are exactly horizontal, when really we should be seeing some sense of roundness. So I went a little overboard on this paint over just because I think this is an incredibly important point and it can't be overstated how important it is. My paint over looks like this. You'll notice first that it's a different time of day and that's just because if I wanted to be true to the original artist's time of day, there'd be some really complex shadow casting. I want to skip all that. So ignore the time of day. Look at just generally the sense of roundness and depth in the original and then in my paint over. And mine has a lot more of a sense of space. And there's a reason for that. So what I first did was to envision a perspective grid. And that just helps me understand where the horizon line is and the general convergence leading to the horizon line. And then I thought of each of these trees as a very simplified shape. So you can see here, I thought a lot about those ellipses. They have a narrower, flatter degree near the horizon line. And then as I recede lower and lower into the picture plane, they have a wider degree. I can see more of the top-down angle and less of the straight-on angle. Now, clearly, these are very simplified in terms of the shape of trees. And I wanted to exaggerate that just for the sense of demonstration. So we can see things almost in profile as they're near the horizon. And then as they move down the image, we see more and more of the tops of objects. That becomes very clear in something like this wall here. We essentially see no thickness to this wall in the image. Whereas in my paint over, we see exactly how thick it is. We see much more of the top of faces down here in the image, and then more of the side as we move towards the horizon line. Before, after. This is a pretty complicated painting, but what I really want to focus on are the faces. When we look at all of these faces, they're either straight on or they're in perfect profile. Well, once again, just like the trees in the previous example, that doesn't quite match with the perspective of the background. And to set this up a little bit, think about a sphere. If we can think about a basic sphere, it has sort of a three-dimensional quality. Well, when I think about sketching faces, I begin by thinking about how are their heads, almost as eggs or spheres, relating to me in space. And so if you can kind of envision a sphere rotated with just these basic guidelines, then drawing the details on top becomes much easier. And what you notice is, depending on what angle you draw the head from, you might see the top of the nose, which completely overlaps the mouth. And that would be if you see it from the top down. Or if you're looking from the bottom up, you can see all the mouth and you're seeing the bottom of the nose. This is basic perspective construction. And it even applies to something as simple as cartoon faces. So when we come back to an image like this one, the way I would correct it is by envisioning those spheres on top of the perspective grid. I'd begin by putting in the perspective grid I would then envision each head as just a basic sphere. And then I would sketch the really most basic aspects of a face. But we'll see here, if it's seen from the top down, we might see the top of the nose. And then these ones above the horizon line, we might see the bottom of the nose. Obviously, I don't have a lot of details here. But just as a general guideline, this matches the perspective of the background. And if you were to follow it through with all the details, it would give a much stronger space and it would feel much more dimensional. So we have before and then after. I've 
corrected the perspective and put bad faces on top. And finally, here's an example of mine. And sometimes all perspective does is make anatomy a little bit harder. Here, what looks pretty okay, or at least so I thought, upon review, I come back, I look at this, and I see his shoulder is actually way too low. It's almost like this shoulder has been dislocated and pulled out of its socket. So there's a variety of different ways I could fix this. Essentially, I need to make his anatomy seem more consistent within the perspective of this image. So what I decided to do for my paint over was to erase the fin, paint his back as if it had no fin, and get a better center line. Because you can see before the center line was kind of over here to the image left, I realized that was not correct. So I erased the center line, made a new fin, and the new fin makes the incorrect arm become correct. So you can almost always change either the object itself or the surrounding objects, and either one can get you to a correct image. In this case, the least amount of work was just moving the fin. So here we have before and after. And the anatomy is improved simply by correcting the center line in perspective. I know this video has run a little long, but perspective is a huge deal. And if you don't have a good grasp on it, I really encourage you to check out the perspective sketching series. This stuff is big. And I want to thank the brave audience members that sent in their art to help with this project. It's not easy to get your work critiqued, so thanks for the help. See you in the next video.